It is now my great honor to meet Priyanka Rai. Priyanka, are you there? Yes. Priyanka is the Global Policy Director at JDRF, the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation based in New York. Priyanka, welcome to Doc Day. Thank you, Bastian, and thank you everyone for joining us. Um, it's been a privilege to uh, you know, have the opportunity to talk to you all about the Type 1 Diabetes Index, um, which is a product that uh, we will be launching soon. Um, so to tell you a bit about the Type 1 Diabetes Index, it is a global tool for the Type 1 Diabetes community, which is brought to you by JDRF International in collaboration with Beyond Type 1, um, the IDF, uh, ISPAD and Life for a Child. Um, we'll be launching this tool in 2022 and it will be the first of its kind uh, which will help reveal a global picture and show the size and scale of type 1 diabetes in the world today. So I'll just take you through a quick presentation. So what does the actual data tell us? Um, so we are working with Graham Ogle from Life for a Child, who will be helping us publish this data soon. Uh, but I can share with you some brief glimpses from the data. And what we can see here is, you know, while there have been many projections and estimates for individual countries, this is the first time that we'll be able to compare the burden of type 1 diabetes. Um, like this image shows on, you, on your screen, um, right now, now, most of the uh, people living with type 1 diabetes appear to be in um, high income countries and um, like Europe and uh, America, etc. But what we also know is that most countries lack the data on the burden of type 1 diabetes. So estimates like incidence, prevalence, mortality, particularly in adults, are, are difficult to find. And these are very cr critical in helping improve the delivery of care. Next slide, please. Now, as you can see in this slide, this is new data that the type 1 diabetes index will be able to help us identify. And what it defines, those dark blue circles that you can now see, is what we call the lost or the ghost population, which is the number of people with type 1 diabetes who would still be alive today if they had access to better care. This is a major finding from the index, and it also reveals the complete burden of type 1 diabetes, which includes the days that are lost to complications arising from type 1 diabetes, the burden of managing the condition from day to day, and it highlights the need for global actions, because as you can see, the burden is large in almost every country, and especially in the global south, where that prevalence, where the, those dark blue circles of missing people are particularly high. So what we hope through collecting and sharing this data uh, is that the global impact of type 1 diabetes will come more into focus and we'll have an opportunity to actually influence action in these areas, in these countries, um, where the condition itself doesn't get much support from governments, etc. Next slide, please. So this this slide here actually highlights where the burden lies and what where our vision for change actually lives. So as you can see, um, you know, there's an urgent component of growth uh, around the number of people we're losing to the condition. Millions who are either uh, some who may be diagnosed and are, are lost because they don't have access to proper care and a lot who are undiagnosed. Um, so if you look at the um, you know, the split between high income, upper middle income and lower middle income and low income countries, you can see that the population of type 1 diabetes is highest in high income because that's the data we do collect. But the burden of the condition is actually really high in countries, low middle income and low income countries where a lot of people are lost to the condition before they're even diagnosed. So this is where, like Emma mentioned, um, for instance, in a low income country like Mali, when there is an intervention, there'd probably be very few people alive with type 1 diabetes, like 28 in Mali that Emma mentioned. And after an intervention, it can actually increase really rapidly and there can be more people living with type 1 diabetes once they have access to good care. 
So in those countries, the focus actually has to be in ensuring diagnosis and getting that supply up. But in a higher income and upper middle income com- countries too, there is a big burden of people who are living with type 1 diabetes, which can be helped reduced by enabling access to better technology like continuous glucose monitoring, insulin pumps, closed loop systems, et cetera. So across the globe, there is different areas uh, of focus for type 1 diabetes that are needed, which we hope that the index will be able to advance. Next slide, please. So the index is right now in a soft launch phase. And what what we do hope is that uh, once it's launched, it'll help, uh, you know, spear a lot of advocacy movements across the world. We'd encourage you to visit us on t1dindex.org and sign up. Uh, Once the index is launched next year, we'll get in touch with everyone. And there's a lot, we hope to be able to support advocates, people living with type 1 diabetes, and their allies who want to make a difference for their communities and countries um, and are concerned about the humanitarian impact of diabetes on the world. Additionally, we also have an opportunity to define areas of need through our data that can help identify where funding would have the greatest impact through industry and philanthropy, including helping prioritizing, directing, and tracking investment in the areas that most need attention. So last slide, Um, thank you for your interest. We would love to hear your thoughts and please do get in touch with us at hello at t1dindex.org. Thank you, Bastian. Thank you, uh, Priyanka.